Hi, what's up guys? Mr. Fabella back here um, and we're going to start inequalities now, a uh, section on inequalities. I do know we've done this before, but we're going to review a little bit more, go over some symbols first and then um, go towards graphing them, writing them, and perhaps even solving them. Let's go ahead and start. Okay, so right here we have some symbols here. Uh, there are equalities and inequalities. So equalities, you're used to an equal sign, right? But then there's also um, the congruent symbol, which is an equal sign with a squiggly line on top, which means same size, same shape. We usually use that for geometry, uh, for figures. And similar, same meaning same shape. So like a small triangle is similar to a big triangle. Uh, as for inequalities, you have is less than, is greater than, and then with a line below it, is less than or equal to, and is greater than or equal to. And then also included in inequalities is showing that things aren't exactly equal. So um, approximately equal to, or you guys are used to saying um, about, so that's one of them as well. Right. And so for the definition of inequality, I'll put it up there, but it's showing that something is not equal. And whether that's less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, less than, greater than, one of those things, um, we will show it right here. Okay, so let's first talk about what it means when it has this. It says x is, and that symbol means less than or equal to two. So what does that mean? Let's see, if we have a number line, you see seeing a number line there, we have from negative five to five, what values will count as being less than or equal to positive two, I mean, positive two. So yeah, one is less than two, zero is less than two, negative one is also less than two, right? Everything to the left is less than or equal to two, but also everything in the middle, so like one and a half is also counted as being less than two, right? So one and three-fourths, one and four-fifths, right? So that's why it's all filled in. So everything to the left of two, including two itself, is less than or equal to two. So any of these numbers, like negative three or negative four or negative 3.6, all of those are solutions to x. They can all be solutions. It's not just like one solution where you're used to with the, with the qualities that we've been doing so far. Um, anything to the left that's covering that line, that is a solution to x is greater, or x is less than or equal to two. So let's try the next one. This is x is greater than negative three. So we have our same number line here, negative three. So let's see, greater than negative three, negative two is definitely greater than negative three. So is negative one, so is zero, right? Um, and everything to the right of that. But then let's see as we get closer to negative three. So like negative two is also, sorry, negative two and a half is also greater than negative three. So a lot of times, if, you, if you're just learning this, you'd say, okay, yeah, um, it, you put a dot at negative two and just everything to the right of that. Yes, but then you're skipping a whole bunch of numbers between. So you, have, you can have negative two and three fourths. You can have negative two and five eighths, negative two and 10 elevenths, right? There's an infinite amount of numbers between negative two and negative three. Um, but it says it's greater than negative three. So it could be anything, but it cannot be negative three. It could be negative 2.999965 or whatever. It is not a solution. I mean, it, it would be a solution, sorry. Negative three would not though. That's why there's a open circle there. So that's the difference between graphing closed circle and open circle for inequalities. An open circle means it does not include negative three. So if it's greater than or less than, if there's no line, it's an open circle. If there is a line, like the one above, it's a closed circle because it's including that number. Okay, so then we fill everything out. And then again, negative two is a solution to that. Like I could put negative two is greater than negative three, and this is a true statement. I could put um, 700 is greater than negative three. That is a true statement as well. And I can also put negative two point eight, seven, five, that is also greater than negative three. All right, 
Let's move on. So if I'm writing an inequality, all real numbers less than or equal to three, less than or equal to, you're gonna have to remember it's gonna be that symbol. Um, it's a graph as well. So if this is less than or equal to three, less than or equal to means it's a closed circle. So it's a closed dot at three, and then less than means to the left. Okay, all real numbers greater than negative two. So it's going to be the greater than symbol. And if it's greater than, it's gonna to be to the right. There's no line under the greater than symbol, so it's an open circle, because it's not including negative two. So open circle going to the right. All right, so in the book, it has the inequalities and what each of them means. So is less than, or you could say is fewer than. Um, the symbol is greater than, is more than. And then these two, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to are interesting because these two right here, these two statements, is at most, is at least, that's a little tricky for a lot of people because it says is at most, but then it's the less than symbol because you think most, and then you think it's gonna be greater than. But if it's at most, it's like, um, you can spend at most $20. That means you can spend $20 or below because you don't have anything more than that, right? Um, at least, right? You need at least five out of six points on this test to uh, pass or something. So you can have five or more. You can't have anything less than that. Okay, let's move on here to some like very simple examples. Of the number six, seven, or eight, which is a solution to the inequality? So this isn't even graphing it, right? It's asking if it's a solution. A solution means if I put that number into this equation or this inequality, who is it gonna be true? So there's a couple ways of doing this. We're just gonna plug these in for now. We're gonna plug in six, seven, and eight into this inequality first, and that's one way to solve it, right? So I can start with six plus two. Let's see, that's eight is less than nine. So that is the solution. And we might as well check the rest of them. Um, seven plus two, this is nine is less than nine. This is not true. Nine is not less than nine, nine is equal to nine. And then as if you would have to do this again, but just for the sake of it, 10 is less than nine, that is not true. So the only true one is this. So the solution would be six is a solution to this. Okay, six is a, a solution. All right, on the same same type of uh, question. Of the numbers three, four, or five, which is a solution, m plus nine is greater than 13, so you just plug stuff in, right? So you have um, 12 is greater than 13, that's a nope, right? Four plus nine is greater than 13, 13 is not greater than 13. Five plus nine is greater than 13, 14 is greater than 13, so that's going to be correct. So your answer here is five. So your answer isn't 14, your answer is five. Five is a solution, the rest are not. So these questions are interesting because it's only giving you these three. There are infinite solutions to inequality problems, usually. Um, <clears throat> so five is one of those solutions. Six is also a solution, seven is a solution, 700, 52 is also a solution. Okay. And then it says, is the given value a solution of the inequality? So again, it's saying x equals four, and you're thinking, well, that looks like an answer. Well, it's not an answer because these are inequalities now. So you, this is a yes or no answer. So you plug this into the inequality. Four plus three, and you can put a question mark sometimes here. Is that greater than nine? Seven is not whoops, seven is not greater than nine. So you could put a, a slash through there. And then this would be, no, four is not a solution to this inequality. If you put four where the X is, it's not going to give you a true statement. Along the same lines, if I do this, if I put five and plug that in, use substitution, five plus six, is that greater than 12? or is that less than 12? 11 is less than 12, so then you would say, yes, it is a solution. 
Yeah, so there's a bunch of other problems like that, but we'll move on because this is that's very, very simple. Uh, let's try a little word poem here. Lisa works at a gift shop. She receives a bonus if she makes more than 20 balloons, uh, balloon bouquets a month. Which months did Luisa receive a bonus? Use inequality B is greater than 20, where B represents the number of balloon bouquets made each month to solve. So here, basically, you're plugging in each of these numbers to see which one is greater than 20. So 25 is greater than 20, yes. So actually, let's do this over here. Um, so this is gonna be B, because B represents the number of bouquets. So I'm gonna be saying that's B, right? So 25 is greater than 20, yes. Greater than 20, nope. 18 is greater than 20, nope. 32 is greater than 20, yes. Okay, so which months did she receive a bonus? That would be the two where it was greater than 20, here and here. So that would be July and October. All right, so now we're gonna move on to writing inequalities and graphing inequalities. So let's start with this. Write an inequality for the sentence, you must be over 12 years old to ride the go-karts. So first, you're gonna want a, a variable because it's gonna be an inequality. So let's say A. A equals, we'll just call that age. That'll stand for age. That's your age. Your age. Okay, let's be more specific and say your age. Because it's asking, you must be over 12 years old, right? So your age, A, uh, must be over 12 years. So this has to be over 12 years. Uh, to ride the go-karts. So. Okay, so it says you must be over 12 years old to ride the go-karts. It doesn't say here that you can be 12 years old. Usually it would say you must be 12 years or older to ride the go-karts, but here it says you have to be over 12 years old. So it has to stay there. So if you're 12 years old, it's saying that you cannot be uh, ride the go-karts. Right. Okay, so now it says to graph. Uh, an inequality and it's giving you it here n is greater than 9 so let's start off with a number line I kind of don't like the number lines that they give in the book um, usually if I have a number line zero should be included right and I don't really I actually don't care about how far apart they are if you're if you're grabbing inequalities so like this is actually fine zero is nine this is fine I don't need to put one two three four all those things. I just need to know what, where zero in relation to the number and is my line going left or right. So I'll do it on both since um, the book has it a little differently. So n is greater than nine. So we're starting at nine. It can be, it actually cannot be nine. It can be greater than nine. So the number is greater than nine or to the right. So it's an open circle to the right. Same with this graph, open circle to the right. Okay, and let's move this over here because it's kind of bugging me that it's not lined up. So we'll just, okay, moving on. Graph inequality, n is less than six on a number line. Here, it didn't give you a number line, so I'll just draw one myself. So, and again, you have zero, I have six. I could put negative six here. I don't have to put one, two, three, four, five. I can if I wanted to, but it's not necessary. Um, here graph the inequality and it's less than six. So all your numbers could be less than six, so it's left of six or other numbers less than six, but it cannot include six, so it's gonna be an open circle. You notice here that I'm putting the line on top, like above the number line. That's just because if I put it right on top and there it can get like, I, I see as soon as we do this and it gets like super sloppy. So to avoid that, I'm putting it above it Usually it's fine, like the book will show it, but that's because like if you're using a highlighter or something, it's kind of nice if you're doing that, um, if it's clear that it's um, an open circle and stuff. But to save time, or, I mean, not save time, but just like for most people, this is the best way to do it because even if you're sloppy about it, it's very clear what you're trying to graph. Right. So here, graph the inequality on the number line, n is less than or equal to 10. So here, 10, 
less than 10 is to the left of it, right? Um, and or equal to, so it can also include 10. So that's a closed circle. Okay. Here it says traffic on a residential street can travel at speeds of no more than no more than 25 miles per hour, right? And graph an inequality to describe the possible speeds on the street. So again, this uh, line bothers me, but whatever, it's the way the book wants it. So I'll leave it, I guess. No more than 25 miles per hour. So first of all, you need a um, variable. So let's see, let's call it S equals speed, right? And so your speed is no more than 25 miles per hour. That means it can be 25 miles per hour. Think of your street. It could be less than that. Usually a speed limit doesn't say 25 miles per hour or more. You have to go faster than 25 miles per hour on a street. Um, so in this case, it would be less than or equal to, because it can be 25 miles per hour, 25. Okay, so to graph this, it's going to be a closed circle, less than or equal to, and it's going to be to the left because it has to be slower than 25 miles per hour. Then here, you must be 48 inches tall to ride a certain roller coaster, write and graph an inequality, and describe the possible heights that can ride the roller coaster. So here, 40, at least 48 inches tall. Okay, so let's say H is, stands for height. Okay. That's your height. Um, so your height has to be at least 48 inches tall. So if it's at least, you can be 48 inches tall or taller. So it's gonna be greater than or equal to 48. All right, so if I'm gonna graph this, I'll just put zero here, 48 inches there. And you can be 48 inches, you can ride the roller coaster, or taller. So you can be 48 inches or taller. I mean, it, it says it right there. Um, and that describes it. So anything that falls along this line, if you're 60 inches tall, if you're 78 inches tall, you can still ride uh, the roller coaster. All right, so that was a quick lesson on inequalities, writing and graphing them. Hopefully that was helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.